Women Who Own It podcast spotlights women business owners who are pioneers in their field, setting trends, blazing trails, and creating game-changing innovations. Brought to you by WeBank, the largest certifier of women-owned businesses in the U.S. and a leading advocate for women business owners and entrepreneurs. And me, Allison Maslins. I've been a business owner for the last 35 years. I'm the Wall Street Journal best-selling author of the book, Scale or Fail. So join our bold community of women who built it, grew it, and own it. I'll see you on the show. The Women Who Own It podcast is supported by Target Corporation, a women-owned corporation. Welcome to Women Who Own It podcast brought to you by WeBank, the largest certifier of women-owned businesses. This show is for women business leaders, brought to you by women business leaders. I'm your host, Allison Maslin, founder of Pinnacle Global Network, where we mentor thousands of business owners around the world to scale their companies. And today I am so excited. We have Dr. Jacqueline Darna, and she's the CEO and founder of Doc OTC and medical inventor of the Nomo Nausea, Nomo Migraine, and Nomo Sleepless Nights the first and only natural way to stop nausea, vomiting, and headaches instantly for adults, kids, and even your awesome pets. Nomo brands are now distributed in 12 countries around the world for her four product lines and over 120 hospital systems around the U.S. and can be found in big box retail stores like Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, and CVS. And this Tampa native has three degrees, oh my God, in biomedical <laughs> sciences from the University of South Florida, followed by her medical degree as a naturopathic medical doctor and practice anesthesia from Nova Southeastern. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to dive into all this. Welcome, yes. Jacqueline, Thank to you Women so Who much, Own Allison, It. Thank you so much, for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm so excited too. And so, and I wanna learn all about your products. I mean. Uh, you know, nausea, sleepless migraines, these are things that people, you know, millions of people suffer with, right? Yeah. So it's actually I wanna... stated, yeah, it's stated that 50% of the world's population suffers with nausea, vomiting, or headaches daily. So in saying that I've come up with something that I'm able to touch the world and millions and millions of people, that's really what Nomo bands are all about. But I thought that was such an astounding statistic. And it's true. If you're me and you are together and we're talking, you better be, you know, thinking that one of us has actually have had a bad day, right? Maybe a headache um, and or maybe an upset stomach. I know that my son is actually upstairs. Um, he is staying home from school. So if that tells you anything, then he's a uh, yes. part of that statistic. And so how did you come up with this concept? Yeah, and so this no idea. Yes, absolutely. So no more nausea was actually born out of my birth story. So I gave birth to my beautiful daughter, uh, Mia, actually eight years ago, and I ended up having to have an emergency C-section. So the reason why I ended up getting sick, uh, I, I know because in practicing with anesthesia, but I was given a spinal and I was given some pain medication that goes inside the spinal space, caused me to vomit for three days straight. So unfortunately oh it didn't really give me any pain relief. Um, but it was really scary because of the fact that you know, in practicing anesthesia, these are all the people that are my friends, family, um, things of that nature. And so they were like, there's nothing else we can do. You just keep Ralphing. <laughs> what yeah. are we going to do to help fix it? And I remembered in anesthesia school, we talked about acupressure. So I basically took some gauze, also known as like a napkin in the medical community, and applied it to the P6 point that we had learned at one slide in anesthesia school about postoperative nausea and vomiting. At the same time, my, my stepmom walked in with a peppermint plant and she said, I read this on Google, smell, smell these, you know, leaves. And I was like, I'll do anything at this point. So I looked like an Egyptian princess. I had leaves scoured all over my um, hospital floor, but I never had them when I needed them. So I asked for a piece of tape and taped the leaves to the acupressure point so that I could smell when I most needed it. So that is the birth story of how Nomo Nausea was actually born. And then kind of the rest is history, getting into a bunch of hospitals, hundreds of hospitals um, in the US and then in 12 countries of the world for hospital distribution. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. You know, I love that. And, and I do think that, 
um, you know, they say uh, inventions are the mother of necessity, necessity. right? Mm -hmm. It comes out of something yes. that we need, or is there is this gap, you know, of yeah. something that's missing? And obviously, this was a really big gap that you were personally experiencing yourself. Absolutely. And so, um, so that's fantastic. And so, uh, you know, so what has been the reception to all of this? And, you know, working with your customers and then buying the product? What, what are people saying about the products? So they love it. It was actually my wonderful pregnant women. Um, so they would actually get it inside the hospital for their labor and delivery, or somebody in their family would literally have it whenever they went under anesthesia so that they wouldn't get sick afterwards. And then it was those pregnant moms that called me literally um, and emailed and said, hey, I loved using your product when I delivered, but what about when I was suffering from morning sickness? And so it caused me to kind of rethink and rebrand because we are no Monaja Med Plus inside of our hospital lines uh, across the world. And then I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. So we ended up getting a website. Uh, we started at first with a website and with Amazon. And then slowly but surely, we were like, well, we need to be in more big box stores. So as of right now, we actually have thousands of OBGYNs that recommend us. Um, they don't actually sell it in their office. Instead, they actually get little coupon cards. And those coupon cards give the retailers nearby saying, go to Walmart, go pick this up um, right after you're done with the actual visit. And my pregnant moms are really the reason why I decided to expand in a much more uh, vertical uh, manner than not just horizontal for the business. Yeah, you know, uh, in the scale up method, which is what what we uh, help our clients scale their company with our method. One of the scalable models is that you have your community become your sales force. Yep. In a sense, these pregnant women became your sales yes. force. Yes. Word of right. mouth marketing is still the best marketing that there is. Um, I actually, we were doing influencer marketing before it was even influencer marketing. Um, so, and now it's just really interesting that everything from, you know, celebrities, reality TV stars, um, golfers, um, you know, NFL players, we we're actually utilized on the playing fields, you know, for the NFL, we were actually considered, uh, we were actually second um, round, I guess, second pick or whatever for their NFL first and future. So in order to help people run faster, work out harder, you know, do all those things, but not having to get sick. And so it was really the players and the celebrities and everybody was like, you know, Jackie, I really need this. I even have rappers um, as a, you know, a, how would I say overindulgence? Um, so they, you know, again, yeah. it, it just became my voice and that really helped to push the message and how I got into now almost 30,000 retailers, uh, big box wow. stores. And I had done this all without, um, without even having a, a distributor inside of that field. It was really just me and my team going and talking, you know, to the different people and saying, why don't you ask your wife? Why don't you ask your children? Why don't you... Um, and just forming that rapport with them. And I'm always, they always say that I'm the favorite because they take these things and then they put them in their desk. And when they need them, they call me and they're like, wow, you'll never believe this. My wife has been suffering from migraines for years. And finally she has something that she can go to. So it's that wow. warm, uh, amazing feeling from my customers that really keeps me going and keeps me inventing. Well, you're also a natural marketer. It sounds oh, like you. to me too, you know, <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, you've got the right product, you know, the right offer and obviously talking to the right people with the right message. That's really key uh, in growing and scaling your business. And I love the fact that you went right to these influencers that have a lot of followers and, yeah. uh, you know, that's a great marketing strategy, um, but it's helped on all fronts. Now, have you found you know, because I like to talk about scaling and sort of break this apart for for the listeners today. Um, you know, are you finding is there one area you like better, like going to into the retail stores? And I know some a lot of the listeners are trying to get their products into Walmart or Home Depot, things like that, right. or going to direct to consumer. Or both. So I will tell you, um, I appreciate the compliment for marketing because I always feel like that's something that I never uh, did. I never took a, I never took a business or a marketing class actually in medical school. So for me, this was all just 
you know, learn, try and, and repeat the things that worked well and then the things that didn't. Um, but I will say that business to consumer uh, marketing is, is very expensive. So I always give my one to 300 rule. So like everything that I do, I want to touch at least 300 people because we're never going to to get more time, right? So instead, it's like in doing this interview, in doing whatever it is, somebody else might listen to it um, and say, wow, you know, my best friend is pregnant. She might need this. And then she will say, this was such a great product. Thank yes. you. And then they kind of move that message. Um, but I will say that for us, business to another actual storefront, giving that notoriety, um, kind of like whenever you're wanting coffee, you know, do you go to unknown or do you go to Starbucks, right? It's, it's that they have built that rapport with those customers uh, at Walmart, at CVS, at Bed Bath & Beyond, at Bad by Baby. So they know that everything that that's on their shelf, that they have a little bit more security in knowing that. And that's kind of the way that it, it moved the message. But I will tell you that I still, I know this sounds crazy, on my website, I still call some of my, my customers, like physically call them if they left a number for, for shipping. And I'll be like, hey, is there anything I can invent for you that would make your life better? And I had actually some really great things and really great conversations. And um, the next kind of line uh, will end up being no more stress, no more cough and cold, no more itch, and then no more pain. So I'm not just a one trick pony. Um, my, my patent is very all inclusive of essential oil infused acupressure. So it's very broad and I'm um, wonderful to be able to have such an incredible team that can push yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's so powerful. I bet they're so surprised to hear you calling them. They're oh, like, they are. What? They're like, <laughs> really? They're like, I just saw you on TV the other day. Like that was, this is who I'm talking to. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's me. So yeah, never... but it says a lot about you. And I think that sometimes as we grow and scale, we forget how important and how insightful it is to stay connected to the customer. So that's that's really powerful. Are there any tips that you can give, give today to the listeners on getting into the big box stores? Was there anything um, yeah. you know, that helped you get a yes? From... So my, favorite, my favorite quote is, business is the business of people. It's not products or services. And that is absolutely correct. So I, I call it nice LinkedIn stalking. It's not really stalking, but if you notice that the person that you've been trying to be introduced to um, is actually attending an event or they're speaking at a certain event and or they, let's say um, they're big I'll just use University of South Florida, they're big Bulls fans or whatever it is. And then for some reason, you happen to have tickets or like whatever that is, any way that you can make it an event or an experience for them is really, is really thought provoking. And they will look at that highly. Now, another thing is you have to make sure you practice your pitch. Um, I say 30 second pitch is the most important, whether you're in an elevator or whether you're, you know, talking and actually pitching to one of these big box retailers. If you are a person that is a woman owned business or you're, a, you know, a Hispanic, you know, um, black Native American, any type of diversity, there are programs out there. I'm personally so proud to be a WeBank certified company. I have my big woman owned logo on it, um, but they're really the conversation starters, meaning I go to the conference and from the conference, we talk with supplier diversity. Did you know there's someone that has a job in these big companies to make sure that we are getting, that they are spending money with diverse suppliers like myself? And so it was really the, the fostering at the very beginning. Um, I never even wanted Walmart actually at the very beginning because I was only focused on hospitals. And so Michael Byron, who's um, one of the, the global supplier diversity for Walmart, Every year I would see him and I'd be like, hi, Michael, it's so great to see you again. And then last, um, last year, actually, even though we didn't have a per, you know, in-person conference, I actually messaged him and I said, hey, Michael, I'm ready. And he goes, all right, kiddo, let's do it. And then boom, put me in front of the buyers and I was um, oh my on gosh. the shelves. So again, it doesn't always mean that it's going to be a yes right in then and there. But if you know your audience and you know you know, that you have a great product and you know, the buyers on a personal level, that's all that you can ask for, especially if they're going yeah. on a cruise. I would always yes. hit them up and be like, Hey, on LinkedIn, let me send you something. You might need to use it and then put it on your shelves when it works for you. 
Oh, I bet they're so grateful we're on that cruise and they start getting seasick. Oh, yes. uh, but you know, it's all about relationships and that's where WeBank is so incredibly powerful. Yes. I'm gonna be at the WeBank conference this year. So I'm excited. We're gonna have a booth and everything. Um, and so I also like what you said about, will this reach 300 people minimally? This idea, cause that, that really is the one to many concept which scaling is all about. Like, where could you, what could, like, for instance, this podcast is going to reach a lot of people. You and I are talking. It's right. the same amount of time and energy to talk to one person to reach many. So I think that's a really good set point. Yeah. To so I'm going to give, I'm going to give another, I'm going to give another little example. Actually, I just had a meeting, two meetings before I get to be on this amazing podcast. Um, a marketing group literally came to what's called my CEO connect. I was, um, wonderfully happy to grace the cover of a um, business magazine. Um, so I was the cover and I was so excited and they threw this gigantic event. And at this event, they were saying, Jackie, you, even though you are not your products, you are a brand in yourself. And I get fired up. I don't even, he even said, he goes, I don't even have nausea, but my wife is pregnant. And I just feel as though that you could do something different for your buyers. So he actually, we were talking about it, doing like a video brochure thought it was the greatest idea to be able to package, like put it almost like in a box. And then when you open it, it's me talking about the products almost as though I was there. So things, little things like that. And then another thing that I always say is find your niche, like figure out what that return on investment is. So for me, who better to trust than your OBGYN, right? Than a, than a doctor. So it was very easy for me to say, to call them and literally have, we have a call team, but for them to talk with and form relationships with these doctors and say, don't sell it in your office. Instead, I want you to send them to go pick them up off the shelves. And that's the way that I was able to get um, the, basically the high turnover that we get on the actual shelves. That was a very smart move because first of all, these doctors, they're not often comfortable selling anyway. So you would right. often lose the sale. And it's easy for them to send someone to a trusted, you know, a trusted. And they donor. have folders. Like, so think about it, like, and, and again, we, we do this on multiple different fronts, but for women, you know, you're brand new pregnant, you open this little folder and it has all this information in it. It has cord blood. It has all these suggestions and no monaja is just one of them for the actual morning sickness. And then and um, we do this with nurse navigators who are for chemotherapy and cancer patients. So wow. same concept as to who is that touch point going to be and how can I reach with one conversation? How can I reach 300 of their patients? And then potentially, because women, we run the wor world and we also are the big buyers. We're 70% of the buyers. How can we say, oh, you know what? My husband, which he is today, tarpon fishing. So I sent him with no more bands, right? Or if somebody's on the computer all the time, how the U.S. government ended up uh, purchasing and procuring no more nausea, or excuse me, no more migraine for those people who have bad headaches and migraines, so they can still work. Wow, you are a mover and a shaker. This is true. Now, so inventor, right? Mm -hmm. Then shifting to the CEO. Yes, being the CEO of your business, right? And and. And as you grow, right, you've got to step into that leadership role. How has that been for you to work on the business instead of in the business? Or do you still struggle with that? Um, actually, I am surrounded by an incredible team. Um, we, I, again, we're about 26 strong. I'm very, very happy. Um, but I always think of it in this way. If it would take me longer to do something, I know my worth, I know how much I cost per hour and I intentionally hire out, right? So you can't be the best and the brightest at absolutely everything. So I think that that turning point for me happened. Um, I ended up leaving the hospital setting about a year and a half into the company. And I had a goal and my goal was as long as I can make three times what I'm making, um, you know, at the hospital or my company is, I'll just jump and I'll go for it. And that really changed the dynamic for me because no one ever told me um, a very, you know, a, a, a company that you're spending a lot of time and money on, but you're not getting any money in return. It's just a very expensive hobby. It's right. not a business. And so, you know, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. So really money following that money path um, helps me to be a better leader because I have the things that I can measure. So 
you have to be able to measure what it is that you're doing and to see if it's effective or not. And then when it comes to my team, really electing and putting people in place that now I joke that they are kind of like mini me's, right? So whether they're on camera or whether I am, man, they kind of, they, they pick up on the nuances of just hearing me trying to, you know, push them to be the best and brightest possible. And one of my VPs of sales, um, you know, they say you always want to train them so well, right? That they, um, that they could leave and go anywhere, but you want to treat them so well that they'll stay forever. She actually ended up starting her own business. And I was like the biggest cheerleader for her. I was sad that she was going to go, um, but she stepped back down to her role as a sales rep just to kind of maintain her others. But again, you know, we just, we really need as women to kind of come together. And I always say, I want to teach other women what I don't know or what I didn't know at the very beginning. But um, yeah, being a CEO, you know, you have to learn that it's all about people. It's all, that, that's yeah. really the big thing. And if you're good as a good people person, then you can move that message in a way that will get them to be fired up about your company or product just as much as you are. And it starts with you. You better be the first in the morning and the last one, right? Like that same concept and you have yes. to be open. Um, so I think that, I don't know. I think I kind of fell into the role as CEO and I fired myself one time. I went to bed, fired myself and said, you know what? I'm just not the right person. Um, my company was moving in a direction where we are now, you know, a really solid seven figure. And I, I remember going to bed and I said, tomorrow morning, um, I'm going to find the right CEO for this company. And so I started writing down all the attributes of all the things that I, that what I need to hire. And I was like, I do that. I do that. I, you know what? I am the right CEO for this company. And so that really oh, cut me. Perfect. Then it was a new perspective. Yeah. You know, that, such great advice. Thank you for sharing all of that. It was fantastic. I do think a great exercise is to write out your own job description as a CEO, right? Yes. And as you said, all of the things that, that you are good at, I do, you know, cause you, you start as you had this idea, right? You were sick, you started this product and you're creative, you're a visionary. And then all of a sudden you're leading a team and it's all different. Uh, you know, it pulls on all different mindset, uh, qualities, behaviors, communication, leadership, you know, and you're like, wait, that's. You know, I was just, and I always say, I, I, I will say I am a master delegator, right? So every, some people are like, no, but I just want it to be perfect. No, it needs to get done. Right. I always say to my team, do then say, right. So like do the action. If it's not a hundred percent, it's okay. We'll learn from the experience, but then make yeah. sure that you say something on social media <laughs> or else it didn't happen. Right. So like, that's always like, we, we always joke about those things, but that's really the determination because each and every job description, if it's things that you need to keep on your plate, absolutely. But if you can offload your plate, every good waitress will tell you if it's, you know, the lighter the load, it's not harder, right. To do. So you want to make sure that you lighten your load and you surround yourself with people that match like to get the job done. Yeah. Powerful, powerful. So you have a global brand now. So you're in several different countries, different languages. Yes. And did you, were you planning for that global reach and have there been challenges as far as being well received in different, different countries, languages, and so on? Right. So, I mean, people, regardless of you know, age, race, you know, religion, whatever it may be, they all experience the same thing because that's what makes us all human. Um, so if, you know, surgery is, is done when it comes to anesthesia, they will have that upset stomach, you know, when it comes to chemotherapy and cancer, same concept as it goes on and on. But working with, um, we do work with different distributors outside of the U.S., because of the fact that they know their market share so much better. Mm -hmm. And I always say, I don't feel like it's a competition. And I actually do this in business personally. There's a bunch of women owned companies um, that I actually pair with, meaning we have an influencer market, marketing tactic for pregnant women. So if there are other products, I am so happy they're already doing it. Let's just give them like this whole nice, beautiful, like basket of pregnancy items um, to them. So it's that same idea that they know that their product share best and it's non-competitive, right? So you want to find like, if it's 
cruise lines, for example, there's cruise lines in many different industries or many different countries. And, but you do have to make sure that the wording comes across. And I'll tell you my biggest fail to this day, I decided as my own company, I was going to go into India. They have, their population is gigantic in comparison to ours. I went in, spent all this money for marketing. We got into um, 120 Apollo pharmacies. It was awesome. And then I was like, why aren't these numbers better? And you know why? Because the word nausea doesn't exist in their culture. Yeah. Meaning mm. in Spanish, I'm Latina, so it's no mo nausea. Nausea means nausea. In other, in French, totally understand it. But in, in Hindi, that doesn't exist as a word. So we spent all this money and realized, you know what? Distributors are the best way to go. So we then, uh, now we give it to them. We give them all the marketing material that they could possibly need, but they know their people best. So if there is no word for nausea, you better believe that I better rebrand. Wow, that's powerful. Now, let me ask you something about the distributorship. This thought just mm -hmm. came up for me was so we have many of our listeners right they have products and they they want to get it out there have you found any challenge with distributors because they're also selling other products right so, as well or are they just selling your products no they're selling tons right so All i right. okay so i'm going to give you an example from the medical community um, there are big guys, you know, the Cardinals, McKessons, all this, whatever it is. And I didn't want to be one in a million. I wanted to be that one, meaning I chose for medical distribution in the pocket. So Sharn Anesthesia is for anesthesia alone, right? Um, we have Medline, which is for this specific entity. We have, um, you know, a bunch of other ones that are very specific for GI specific for this for uh, um, labor and delivery specific and I just happen they love my product and I do every year a product knowledge with them and with their sales team and every year they at least put me on the cover once why because you know I speak at different conferences for them which I don't have a booth they have a booth I speak and I'm like hey visit my distributor's booth because I'm happy to do that. I want them to get sales. And I, and again, that's the way that I personally like to stand out, but I have avoided being like a catalog company, like being one of this like gigantic Bible looking um, entity. Instead, right. I'd rather be a much more niche distributorship. But if they have other comparable products, um, like pregnant, you know, pregnancy pillow and uh, a ginger tea and all these other things, that's actually good because they know their market. So stick with what they do best and don't try to be everything for everyone. So that's how I found my distributors. Yeah. And I love that. And again, back to the relationship building, you're building yeah. trust and you're supporting them. You're leading people to them. Yep. Right. So you're being what we call a go giver. Out of, from Ooh, I book, like that from, word. Go yeah, giver. there's a great book called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. So if anyone's involved in sales or marketing, it is so incredibly powerful. But this idea with we lead with giving first, yes. right? And so that's, that's really powerful. Now, um, you know, so in the, in the health and wellness world, and you are... I mean, did you ever consider your creating products that are really making a big impact in the world? You know, what, what's your thoughts around that? Yeah, I, um, it really wasn't until my, my intern, my first intern ever. Um, and I still, I, I still have interns. I think that you can just teach them so much and it's really about a real life situation in companies, but, um, I digress. So when it comes to my first intern, she, I remember I was still working at the hospital. I joked that I was working my seven to five and then in the business, my five to seven. And she said, Jackie, like you are great with your patients. You work one-to-one, -one, but you can help one to a million. So what are you doing still working at the hospital? And once I like kind of got that perspective, like I'm really doing this better health and wellness for all people is what I'm after. Um, me mm -hmm. inventing products are just an avenue, but that is like that global perspective as to what can I do, um, you know, in the short period of time that I'm here on this earth and my, my God given gifts and talents that how, how can I make other people's lives better? So 
Yeah, you know what? Mission. That's a great point because, well, first of all, congratulations for what you've created. Mm -hmm. But it's also for those of you that are listening to this and you're still delivering the product or service, <clears throat> you're still working with the client. <clears throat> You might think that, oh, I don't want to stop this because I, I want to still help people. Well, you're going to be able to help a lot more people if you shift into that CEO, role, CEO or visionary role where it can be, you can be helping thousands of people or millions of people. But if yeah. you're still right behind the chair or whatever it is you do working one-on-one, -on -one, that's not going to happen. Yeah. And if you so. get that perspective, like kind of flipping it. So I always say like, you know, front forward facing and then looking at it from an opposite perspective, um, it really changed the dynamic and, and really being passionate about what you do. Um, because there's so many incredible women owned businesses. I know, like I said, there's so many of my friends who I just like try to lift up and listen, there is it's not every day is roses, right? Like not every day is amazing. And there's some days where I joke, we just need some Tito's and bacon, right? And it's us girls that are very high, you know, level CEOs that we just get together and we're like, girl, let me just tell you what happened. And, you know, having that, like that girl, like sisterhood almost, that really gives a different perspective and knowing, and first off, I'm the first person to know when anyone's pregnant. It doesn't matter um, who you are and what company I know that you're pregnant or that your wife is pregnant because I'm always the first call. They're like, Jackie, thank you so much. Like, or I kind of spy on them. I'm like, huh, I noticed you bought my vans the last two months. So uh, is this a new baby? And then they end up kind of saying yes. So it all boils down to relationships. And it boils down to what you can do for others and not the other way around. Yeah, I love that. And speaking of, this year is the 25th anniversary of WeBank, uh, the largest certifier of women-owned businesses. And how has being part of WeBank, this incredible organization, assisted in your, your business growth? I owe everything to WeBank. I actually, um, I actually sit on um, the board at the forum. Um, so again, as a board member, it is incredible, but I owe it all to them. Um, I really grew in my own in business due to WeBank, um, due to the people who believed in me and also those who challenged me too, right? Mentors are just one term. I like to call them cheerleaders, maybe because I was a cheerleader back in college, but I really feel like a mentor is just going to tell you what to do. A cheerleader is going to like cheer alongside you and like physically do that introduction. And it doesn't always have to be female. I will say um, one of my other, he's the global procurement for IBM. Um, so again, another one of the Michaels that I love dearly, he was actually my pitch coach. So I decided to enroll in this WeBank's first ever um, PepsiCo pitch competition. And so I knew that I needed to get in front of all of the buyers, right? All of the supplier diversity, and they were sitting there in their seats and there's like tens of thousands of them. And I was like, how do I get them all to listen to me for like five minutes? And I was like, I'm gonna do a pitch competition. So I'm gonna go out there and try it. And the first year they actually gave each of us, uh, the finalists, a pitch coach. Um, so, you know, Michael Robinson was amazing. And he said, come on, kid, let me help you. But it really wasn't the pitching. I ended up winning, which was amazing, uh, and got into a bunch of uh, retailers because of that. But it was really the mentorship that I got from him after. He walked me to the buyer of Disney, to the buyer of CVS, to the buyer of Walmart. I mean, he did those wow. introductions for me where I didn't have to wait. I was like literally VIP. So if you can find that person that knows everyone, because it's a small community, believe it or not, yeah. um, where I'm on hugging basis with everyone. We'll see about how everybody's doing with the hug. So if you see me coming, I'm really sorry. Um, I, I'm still hugging. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can't so take that I. away or whatever. But um, yeah, and so now, and actually I help to encourage and mentor um, the incoming uh, pitch competition. So I've been the MC the last three years that we did it in person because I won four years ago. Wow. So, yeah. Congratulations. It's like a, it's like a really embraced it. And you know, I love that you went out on a limb, you put yourself out there. And you know, a lot, a lot of times people don't do that because they're afraid. 
And yeah, what, look, why? even if you didn't win, it would have been great still because of the visibility. Yeah. Right. And why? So. And that's that's something else that I always say. Like, so what if they say no? You're in the same position that you were in right before. And they're like, oh yeah, that's right. So why not go for it? I mean, I asked my own husband out <laughs> on, on a date. I literally saw him and was like, hey, you want to take me to breakfast? He was like, yeah, sure. So again, I don't really have that fear, um, probably because in you know medical school, we're very, uh, very few of us are women. Um, and so it just kind of got me to kind of really march in there and ask for what I wanted. But at the same time, there's, it's okay to hear no. It's, mm-hmm. it's actually, we have a no counter in our company. Um, so no mo bands, uh, we, we do. We have a no counter for all of our sales team. The one who gets the most number of no's wins for the month. And that's because I want them. That means that they're going out there to get one no, yes. okay. But to get as many as you can, that means that you've done 10 times the amount of work. Yeah, Sarah Blakely, uh, the founder of Spanx said her dad, used to say to them they he wanted to uh, encourage them to have the most fails possible like that's what he wanted them to talk about at the dinner table which meant that they were stretching themselves and yeah. taking risks right yeah and she um, used to go door to door i love i i love her um, yeah. she used to go door to door um you know and selling copiers if i'm not mistaken yeah fax um, machines fax machines yeah. that was it yeah. yeah so well sales you know if you can sell you can you can build a business so she got that sales education right from the get-go yeah. um now what about was there was there a mistake like when you look back at, at in the journey we all make mistakes but was there mm-hmm. one in particular where you're like yeah that taught me you know so much or we yes. had a pivot from that yeah actually um i it was my epic fail moment and it's that using that big m word right marketing so i decided it was myself um anheuser-busch or you know for beer and taco bus and we put on this gigantic concert it was you know 97x alternative rock concert it was like tens of thousands of people we thought this was going to be a slam dunk i'm thinking Number one, I can help with hangovers. Number two, I can help with the GI, like the abs- upset stomach or the you know acid reflux. I was like, they're gonna flock to no mo bands. Like this is gonna be perfect. And I'm on the stage, literally like hosting this event with three of the big key players. Now it was cool. I did get to meet a bunch of band members and a bunch of celebrities in that sense, and they all thought that bands were awesome. But I spent tens of thousands of dollars for this three hour period of time, right? how many bands do you think I sold? And remember, these bands are like $10, like right around $10, $12. Yes, just guess a number. Uh, 50. I sold seven. So I had just spent over, I don't even, I think it was almost like $50,000, but I don't remember exactly. To make $70. And I made $70. Oh man. That didn't even cover my two beers and a lunch, okay? Right. Right. That's painful. And so what came out of that? Because of the fact that alternative rock and the people who were there spending would rather spend 10 extra dollars on another beer. They're not my audience. So why am I trying to go after them? You have to know your market. You have to know who you're after. Number one, pregnant women. Number two, travel. Number three, cancer and chemotherapy. Those are my three. And then vertigo and all the other outliers, those are my later, but my low hanging fruit, I know my market. And that's the reason why, like I have a podcast, it's called pregnancy pucology podcast. I'm the the favorite doctor, right? That actually talks about- What's it called again? Pregnancy pucology podcast. Oh my god! So it's the science, right? Of pregnancy- And then also given with that laughter and humor that everybody kind of wants to know too, just like your best friend is a doctor that you can ask, will I poop on the table during birth? Like these are questions that you want to be able to ask your doctor, but you're very uncomfortable. I'm that outlandish doctor that talks about it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, but I know my market. And this has been so great, Jacqueline. So people can find your products. Let's just do the quick list of where, where they can find them. 
Yes. So um, no more nausea, no more migraine and no more sleepless nights. I would love for you to come to my website, nomonausea.com. That's N-O-M-O-N-A-U-S-E-A.com. But I also love it when you go buy it from Amazon, Zoo Lily, Bed Bath & Beyond, Bye Bye Baby, and most importantly, Walmart. We are also in Mare and a bunch of other uh, grocery chains because that's what we've been going after this year. So stay tuned. We have quite a few grocery chains that are coming up. And then even more exciting, um, I was trying to think of another vertical. So I actually invented in, in, in patenting, patent pending, Doc OTC. So it is on your telemedicine app, a way to get non-pharmaceuticals automatically added to an online shopping cart so that you can actually get these products like my, my products delivered right to your door or at your nearest pharmacy. So we're currently uh, raising capital for this medical technology that I have. And it's really exciting. It's really exciting stuff. So definitely go check it out. Congratulations. And is there a last piece of advice you would like to, sh to leave us with? that to please support other women, right? It, everybody, I always say that the, it's a girl boss babe squad. And it's so important um, because it really takes a queen to shine another queen's crown and help to fix it if it's a little crooked. Um, because again, it takes a queen to recognize that. I always am so honored and blessed and I feel legitimately happy when women are succeeding that instead of being jealous, right, just to really make sure that they know um, that they're doing a great job. And, and Allison, I told you this before we started filming, I have the biggest girl crush on Allison. I love her to death. I actually was at a pinnacle um, conference and it really was life changing. I was yelling at the top of my lungs, like oh my I can do this. Right. <laughs> and it was really great. Um, but just your aura and your presence and the things that you know, and the just little knowledge that you were able to give changed my course of direction so much so mm. so I, I i'm only so grateful for this podcast for all the rest of the women out there um that haven't been the pleasure of getting to see you in front of a screen oh you are so i can't so wait to meet sweet. you in person <laughs> i know i'm so excited to see you in atlanta it's going to be so much fun i will definitely seek you out Yes. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing any of you that are attending that are listening to this right now. And you're definitely going to want to reach out and connect with Jacqueline. And thank you so much for being here today. Awesome. Uh, thank this you has so been much for having so, me. so wonderful. I hope you all enjoyed this podcast. And, uh, you know, subscribe to the show, share this with your friends. And if you uh, want to learn more about how to scale your company, I actually want to send you a gift, a free copy of my book, uh, my Wall Street Journal bestselling book, Scale or Fail. And we're just going to drop it in the mail to you, no cost to you. All you got to do is go to scaleorfail.com forward slash W B E N C. Okay. And we'll send it to you uh, as my gift. I was looking for my copy, actually. <laughs> okay. I was looking for it because I have it and it's, I was looking for it. Sorry. All right. Well, if you mm -hmm. want to send it to a friend, you can get it there. And uh, until next time, get out there and elevate yourself because you are worth it. Bye everybody. Bye.